Hello viewers, welcome to CEC Gurukul Live. Today we are going to discuss a very important topic in marketing that is marketing mix. Now when we talk about marketing, especially in digital era, era we think that marketing mix is not a thing which we are now following because so many disruptions are there, people are buying online. So what is the point of having 4P? But we will see in this lecture that now also 4P are relevant. So let us start our uh, lecture. Do you know this gentleman on the screen? He is Edmund Joram McCarthy. Now he is the person who has introduced 4P and in 1960 he came up with the idea of 4Ps. The 4P is basically deals with product, price, place and promotion where and in precisely if we talk about the marketing mix, marketing mix all uh, are the tools and techniques which are used to uh, introduce any pro product to the market or uh, deciding the pricing of the market or get it promoted or distribution of the products. So basically marketing mix help in targeting the products and uh, positioning the product in the market. So can you understand what is uh, what you can see in the screen? This is a picture of any laptop, any random laptop. So basically we are talking about a product, any random product. So the question is what is product actually? A product can be a physical product which you can touch, see or feel or it can be any event, place, person, idea, organization, services, anything. It, it can include anything, any key element which we can offer to the other person. Any marketer can offer these different uh, solutions to the market. So while we are uh, talking uh, about products. So there are certain important decisions which a company has to take in order to introduce any product or service and for this lecture we will consider product or service as product. We will use a comprehensive term as product. So there are various decisions which a company needs to take before launching or deciding its product. So what are those decisions? The first one is product variety and quality. Now product quality that is the important thing. We always want to buy only that product which is good in quality and which is useful to us. So basically it is very easy to understand but it is very difficult to define. In very simple language or in very narrow sense we can say that quality is basically no, defect, no defects thing. However, American society for quality defines quality as the characteristics of a product or service that bears on its ability to satisfy stated or implied customer needs which means that a product should be capable to handle or to satisfy the customer for which reason he has bought the product in the first place. It should not feel like I have a, uh, bought a car but it is not able to run or I have bought a watch and it is not telling me the right time. So in that case product is not matching its quality. And moreover quality is also said like when our customers come back and our product does not. So this is the extreme of the quality which every marketer dream to have and moreover every customer want to buy only those products which are of certain quality. And you must be considered that uh, there are different levels of um, quality as well and there is consistency and conformance quality also. By level we mean that uh, any company whenever they are. Uh, coming up with any kind of product, they decide a certain level for their product. For example, iPad offers a certain level of quality while on the other hand Akash tab gives different kind of quality level. So we cannot compare the quality of Akash with quality of iPad because they are into different market segments. But however, whatever iPad quality is giving. Uh, every time we buy an iPad, we expect that minimum level of quality. So that is called conformance quality. Whatever we go outside and we want to eat something. See, we stop our car to Haldiram or Bikaner or any kind of branded outlet where we can have anything. Without any doubt, we can uh, stop our car and we can have that meal. Reason being, because we know that whatever quality they are giving once, they are giving it forever. 
So, it is conformance quality, we cannot buy that product which at one time it is buying very uh, giving very good quality and the other time it is not giving the good quality. Moving further, the second thing is product features. Now, product features are able to help in segmenting the products. On the basis of uh, added features or less features, a company can offer different kind of variety of the products. So, uh, when we want to differentiate our products also from our competitor, we use features as the key criteria. For example, electric car are totally different from our diesel car or uh, gasoline kind of uh, cars. So, it is a completely new features. Moreover, our touch phones are bilkul, uh, are different from our keypad kind of phone. So, basically features are deciding that fit, uh, which kind of product we are offering to the market. Product styles and designs. This is the third decision which a marketer has to decide. Now, style is another way to add the customer value and if we want to define the style, style is simply the appearance of a product. How it is looking? Is it looking dashing? It is looking very in or it is a contemporary or it is a very orthodox kind of product. It is having no, no new features. So, style can also be eye catching or it is very yawning uh, producing and on the other hand, design is more skin deep. There is always thought behind a design. Maybe design is always uh, decided to make the utility more utility in the product while style sometimes just add a uh, kind of a topping in the product not actually adding in the utility of the product. So, this is the basic difference between style and design and good design always contribute in the usefulness and good design always uh, from where we get the clue of design. Basically, when we encounter that one person is handling any kind of facing any kind of problem in handling a product. So, marketer come up or product development team come up with the design which helps in uh, deciding a design. For example, have you observed the tin of cold drinks? It have a different kind of uh, space where you can hold the straw in between so that it cannot move. So, this is the whole idea which companies felt where that while putting the straw inside the cold drink, the straw was not uh, getting stick to one place. It was just moving here and there. Just to take care of that problem, they have just uh, changed the design of the lid from where we can open the cold drink tin. So, this is the very small and very day uh, life example of how design can add the state statement. It can differentiate the product. On the other hand, it can also increase the utility of the product. Now, Next kind of decision that is very important, especially nowadays, it is product branding. Now, what is branding? Consider an example, you are going to a market and you, especially with eatables and with medicines, if no brand is there, random any medicine is there or random any eatable is there, would you like to buy it for your kids or would you like to buy it for yourself? Maybe as a chance you can take, as a fun you can take or as a try you want, if you want to try a new thing, you can take. But as far as confidence is concerned. We have the confidence in branded products only because brand in a very simple term is the promise which a company makes to a customer. So, that means that a uh, brand gives an additional edge to a product which a company uses just to tell a promise, just to tell a thing that we are here and every time we are going to be same. We are not going to be different every time you are going to try us. So, if we want to define it, a brand is a name, term, sign, symbol or design or a combination of all these that identifies the mark maker or seller of a product or service. So many uh, time it happens that from uh, Apple, from it and Apple, you can uh, easily identify, yes, this is Apple iPhone. Samsung write its logo, Samsung. It does not use that with any picture, but it writes its name. Similarly, different companies have different kind of uh, uh, chosen brands or chosen display thing or which we can say it label also. So, it is there and branding is so uh, popular nowadays that from salt like Tata, Tata salt we talk about, Ashirwat uh, salt we talk about to car we have branding. From very small thing to very big thing we all have brands nowadays. Now, other than that. Uh, that in that it instill the confidence in the mind of the customer that yes i am buying a right product or whatever quality i thought i perceived that i am going to i am going to pay about this level of uh, quality 
other than that what branding does so branding basically help buyers in many way buyer uh, brand names help customers identify product that might benefit them see it's very easy to tell anyone i want that thing otherwise it would be very difficult to identify the thing suppose if we don't have any name how someone will call us so brand a kind of uh, that work does with the companies so brand says something about the product quality and consistency we have attached certain kind of image with each brand for maruti we have different brand for tesla we have different kind of image for uh, renault we have different kind of image so similarly uh, with the help of like classmate register you have different kind of image with navneet registers you have different kind of image so we set certain kind of images with brand also moving further brand also helps suppliers such as legal protection for unique product features segmentations etc see if you really want to protect the features on which you are selling the product it uh, you can only get the legal protection if you brand yourself otherwise anyone can copy your features or anyone can copy your usps and they can sell it under their name so definitely it is it works as a registration thing or it helps in registration and it just giving the name to your creativity now sometimes labeling on logos are uh, used synonyms um, interchangeably but there are some difference label and logos uh, are the simple tags attached to products to complex graphics that are part of the packaging as we are known by our names products can be distinguished through labels or logos about which i have talked earlier also that we can identify any product by seeing just its logo or label now other than identification label helps in describing about the products help in promoting the brands and engage the customer labels have many story about that like gap has tried to change its logo and customer feel agitated and they forced company to get back to its old logo so logo has a long history and kind of emotional connection with customers also people it's they sometimes people love their brands as their family member of kid they don't accept any kind of change in the logos so company has to take care the sentiments of the customer also before changing any logo of his company i don't know how many of you remember that vodafone hutch has changed their logo that first it was uh, pink then it came to orange so they have changed their logo also but it's a very high level strategic decision which a company has to take because company has to do all the promotion thing again and again and again to build their brand in the customer of the mi- uh, mind of the customer is again a difficult task now logos are the visual representation of the brand however these are the legal concern about labels and packaging label can mislead customers too sometimes we show something like for whom it was the that uh, lemon was printed there so just to show that we use lemon and lemon is known as to be stain killer so basically they wanted to show that we have put kind of lemon thing in our product and that's why our product is natural and it's it is going to remove the stains but if it is not there just to mere use those things into your labels and logos it can attract the state law regulation so a company needs to be very careful whatever design whatever print whatever whatever words they are using uh, like they have used nimbu yuk shakti so they need to be very clear and particular about that what they are using as a logo because it's kind of giving the message to the masses that they are using this particular thing now support service this is also very important the uh, the customer is not just buying a product they are buying a function also for example if i buy a ac today air condition in such a hot uh, weather definitely i really want a cool air not just a plastic or met- metallic body of air condition so yeah, uh, in this situation the service part plays a very big role now support services are an important part of the customers overall brand experience keeping customers happy after the sale the key, after the sale is the key to building lasting relationship because it it is a continuous connection between the buyer and seller seller will come once and he will buy the products if we are talking about consumable uh, consumer product consumer durable product it's going to last with the customer for say more than 7 year 10 years so it's not that the customer will not interact with the company during that period now it's customer after sale service which is the connection point between the company 
and the product to connect after the sale period and just to tell about what company is doing new in that area now the especially after the popularity of social media this aspect has become very important because the one wrong move from the company will give negative e word of mouth in the social media and company will pay a lot of price to just uh, redo that uh, or correct that uh, problem so definitely uh, in today's scenario especially when digital media is there when we are connected to each other when we are living in a network society we need to be very as a marketer company needs to be very very particular about the uh, customer care activities so with this we are now moving to the second p of uh, marketing mix that is pricing now by definition in narrow sense price is the amount of money customers pay to the to obtain the product while broadly we can define price as a sum of all the values that customers give up to gain the benefits of having or using a product or a service so definitely there are no free lunches if we are going to use anything we need to pay a price sometime customer paid that price in terms of money or in terms of the data which we talk especially facebook in facebook scenario or google scenario we can say that we are using the services but we are not paying the price no maybe directly we are not paying the price but indirectly we are paying in form of uh, when company we are using that com- particular site different companies are advertising their product they are earning from advertising there could be different business model to earn but the ultimately price is paid by the customers of the product now price is the in the whole marketing mix is the only element in where it produces revenue while other three marketing mix only are the burden in the balance sheet of the company this is the pricing is the only factor which earns something for the company and all other element represents cost now pricing is a big headache because there is no formula how to price any item or how what what is the right price that is a million uh, million dollar question in front of any company because uh, they have to think about competition about government policies about the customer about the elasticity of the product that how to price a customer for example blackberry z series mobile phones came and they were uh, tagged highly priced they couldn't survive in the market because when uh, they, they were compared in the terms of price there were many low price options available in the market and when it terms uh, when it compared in terms of the performance many high performed mobile phones were in the market so similarly there is no set rule defined about how to price a pro- uh, product now however pricing can be used as a smart tool for creating and capturing the customer value samsung and micromax also used it as their uh, competition strategy they they similarly came up with the low price products and high quality they gave in those prices that's why they were able to capture the huge market share now these are uh, there are three different major pricing strategies available for the company the first is customer value based pricing i'm sure uh, many of us have heard about the tata nano so tata nano was about uh, the vision of uh, ratan tata where he wanted to come up with a car within the range of 1 lakh so basically he designed a product as per the customer value and he chose the product that the cost remain within that range so if we d- want to define it the company set prices after designing and producing a product but in customer value based pricing buyer's perception of value are key to price we know that how much customer is going to pay about that only then we fix the price of the product not other way around now second is cost based pricing when we talk about cost based pricing cost are set the floor of the for the price that the company can charge it involves setting price based on the cost of producing distributing and selling the product plus a fair return for the company's efforts and risk for example petrol price if we talk about so it when it comes to us it incorporates all the cost which are uh, inside Uh, making the petrol usable to us when we took out it from the ground we refined it we distributed it plus taxes similarly i gave the example of tata, tata nano so they came up with a customer value strategy 
while other companies like Maruti is coming like whatever cost they are having, they are giving that price plus their uh, profit thing and they are giving a price to the customer and they offer their product as per their uh, cost occurred plus their profit margin. So, customer if customer want ki it is not of uh, worth 5 lakh let us say, so customer won't buy it, but they will not reduce it as per the customer. Customer can switch to any uh, cheaper version of the car or any uh, low price segment car, but definitely they are not going to reduce the quality of the product to make the price down. Whatever they have decided that they will make the car of this quality and whatever cost come, they will go ahead with that. Now, the third and last pricing strategy is competition based pricing. Sometimes we are having more cost of the product, but still we are not able to charge that product because competition is so intense in the market and telecom rate or mobile data is the best example of this kind of company. In spite of whatever cost they are having, Jio came and they make phone calls or mobile data virtually free. Now, why I am saying virtually free? Because there is a long debate that whether they are charging or in which form they are charging. So, virtually free it was and it changed the whole scenario of telecom industry. Now, the telecom, uh, the mobile, the call rates, I remember the days when incoming was 16 rupees. Now, even for outgoing, sometimes we are not paying. So, that is the whole change which, which competition has came uh, bring in the market. So, definitely it involves setting prices based on competitor strategy, cost, price and market offerings. Consumer will base their judgments of a product's value on the price that competitors charge for similar products. And another example can be Tropicana juice and real juice. Now, definitely they follow competition Coke and Pepsi. If one is coming uh, with 50 paisa cut down, another is also following the same suit by cutting 50 paisa or 60 paisa. So, these all strategies are maybe not long term because Airtel has also tried to uh, come with reliance in this kind of price war, but ultimately this is not a feasible strategy which a company will take in a long run. Now, uh, what could be the important pricing decision? List price, list price is the tag price on a product, whatever is written in the product. So, a company has to decide it, ki whatever price, what price they want to write. Here, psychological price uh, matters a lot like they will write a product triple nine one double nine so psychologically they will feel that price is less than uh, is very less than two thousand in case of one triple nine it's just all, all about psychological how much how much they want to write is that they want to make a huge difference between list price or the actual price which for which they will give the products to the customer so it's a completely company strategic decision the second is discount now, discounts are of uh, two types, cash discount and trade discount. Now, trade discount is given to basically the vendors uh, for giving the products while cash discount is giving on the cash uh, when we really want to pay in cash. So, trade discount is basically advantage to the customer to selling and it, it is same for everyone while cash discount is maybe selective and to the given to the customer who are paying in the cash form. So, that is a this is a call which a company needs to take whether they will first of all whether they will give any kind of discount on the list price or they will charge as per the list price. Suppose we go to the mall and we, we always see tag and if there is no discount scheme running. So, we understand that whatever is written on a tag we are going to pay this much of price. While when we go to the local shop we are asking okay tag to uh, is right it is fine but what we are going to give. So, that is the basic difference between list price and discounted price. So, at some place we taken it as uh, granted that we are going to have discounted, but at some places we need to ask whether any discounts are there or not. Similarly, allowances are there. So, it is a different kind of allowances uh, a company can offer to its customer that whether you will give uh, uh, any payment earlier or whatever they are um, uh, any uh, conditions for that. Now, payment period. Now, this is basically again for the huge customer sometimes uh, we can add the installment system in also there because where the products are available or installment system what would be the payment period what would be the down payment so that's a completely call of the company whether they want it on the discount thing or on the installment thing otherwise if we, they are selling it through wholesaler there also they can decide that whether they want to give a payment period to the customer or uh, or they will immediately ask for the cash as soon as they deliver the 
goods to the customer or wholesaler or retailer now credit terms when they decide that they are uh, going to explain the payment period they also decide what would be the credit terms if we are giving you the credit period what would be the terms or conditions behind using that uh, payment period basically uh, they they will give 100% credit uh, or they will give 60 percent credit what would be the penalties if the things are not if the price is not paid on the time so these all are decision which a company takes at a higher level how to price the products and these are the basically strategies how to redistribute the products in terms of pricing decisions now we are talking about the third pay p which is place now you can see from the picture that it's more about distribution the things it's more about placing it's a scene of a market where people are coming they are just checking out the stuff and sales person are busy uh, busy in showing the things so basically it's a setting where a company is encountering the customer with its products so place includes company activities that makes the product available to target consumers till now we have seen that company has produced the product they have decided ki what product we are coming up with the market now second step they have decided that at what price we are going to give this product to our customer now basically place tell that how we are giving going to distribute this product and who all are getting this product so basically there are different channels for uh, distribution a uh, different decision for distribution as well the first one is channel the second is coverage the third is inventory the fourth is transportation and fifth is logistics so there are different decisions about distribution also which a company has to take the first is channel the second is coverage the third is inventory related decision transportation and logistics so now we will see one by one what all are these decisions now channels see when a company is producing they need someone to distribute the products and how to give it to the products sometimes they are giving it directly but sometimes they need intermediaries so channels does this kind of work for the company for making the products and services available to customer company requires building relationship with the resellers they are also called downstream partners or the marketing channel or we can also know them know them as a distribution channels so basically the basic task they do is to distribute the products and they sell it to the customer but sometimes especially with the advent of digital media companies are choosing to disintermediate the things now disintermediation things mean to remove all the intermediaries from the marketing uh, mix and they are directly giving the goods to the cu customers like tesla cars they have allowed customers to buy direct all the cars from the tesla itself now a company channel decision directly affect every marketing decision now pricing is also based on the number of channels sometimes we have large number of channel in between so definitely the cost of the product is going to rise and hence the pricing will also increase but sometimes if company is selling these products directly to the customers in that case the prices of the customer uh, products will automatically come down pricing also depends on whether the company works at a national discount chains uses high quality specialty stores or sells directly to customers online the firm's sale force and communication decisions depend on how much persuasion training motivation and support its channel partner needs basically sometime company has to motivate its intermediaries to sell the customers uh, with their products and they they uh, they offer they offer or they come up with different kind of programs to motivate their dealers only and they give kind uh, different kind of incentives to the dealer, dealers also that who is going to sell the maximum number of items now members of marketing channel perform many key functions such as they distribute the information they are the source of sending or distributing or gathering the information in two way mode two way by means that they are telling what customer want and they are also telling the com company's version about the product to the customer so they are basically working as a bridge as far as information transmission is concerned the second is promotion Co company tells to the 
dealer that we are come up with the product but how customer is going to know of course there is advertisement or which we are talking uh, about uh, this in later part of the presentation but the sometimes we go to the market and we or we uh, leave all the decision of choosing a product on our middleman or our shopkeeper in that case channel plays very important role in choosing an item by promoting a product of any company so there could be different motive behind promoting a particular product we are not going into that but definitely dealers or middlemen also promote the products of the company or they display it on their counter or at the entry of the shop or something like that then contact contact is finding and engaging customer and prospective buyers now they tell companies that now com buyers want this kind of features or you might if you come up with this kind of uh, feature in your product you might have this kind of buyer so basically they also tell that kind of information they give leads to the company that who can be your potential buyers matching that shaping offers to meet the buyers need including activities such as manufacturing grading assembling and packaging and these all small but important information about the customer is transmitted to the company through middleman or through this dealers and uh, wholesaler or retailer person only now negotiations reaching an agreement on price and other terms so that ownership or possession can be transferred now this all can be done with the help of uh, uh, middleman or channels only that they ensure that when a uh, ownership was lying with the company how it can smoothly transfer to the customer so uh, our dealers play very important role in that scenario coverage now this is the very very important decision which a company needs to take they have come up with the product they are ready to sell it but from where to start in how much in how much area they need to come up should they product uh, bring a product in a local market only or should it they release to all india level or should they include the different overseas market also so this is a very important decision a company has to come up because they have to make different decision depending upon the coverage decision so basically they can go for the intensive distribution where they can stock the products in as many as outlet as possible sometimes we come up a product come up and we suddenly see that kind of product in every shop uh, i remember the dom stationery came Uh, just now maybe 10 years back and immediately they were available with every shopkeeper and they have snatched a good portion from the camel or from all the already established companies now second is exclusive distribution that giving a limited number of dealers the exclusive right to distribute the company's product in their territories see uh, different mobile phones have started this kind of strategy like uh, i uh, one plus phone or me note phone they have selected amazon for distributing their phones first so they have selected or flipkart uh, as their distribution channel or distributing partner so this is all the strategy and here the middleman is in at very advantageous place that only that product is available with that kind of middleman so here the product also plays very important if the product is hit the middlemen are going to make the money and if the product is fail then it's going to give a huge loss to the uh, middlemen and similarly one more example could be the film distribution so film distribution rights are purchased by a few peoples and they can make good money if the film is hit and definitely they are going to have huge losses in case film is flop no selective distribution the use of more than one but fewer than all of the intermediaries that are willing to carry the company's products now in that case they select very few not single but very few dealers to sell their product like in south delhi they will uh, choose 4 5 10 dealers so that means it's a midway between the exclusive distribution or the intensive distribution where they will make available products though it would be visible but it won't be available at every place so companies are also coming up with this kind of strategies now inventory now it is inventory is also important because the companies are selling online so it's very important that they should know how much inventory a customer may ask what is the right inventory balance they should have because keeping an inventory is also uh, adding cost to the company and it will make the 
thing obsolete also and they have to take care of that inventory also so and it it's giving a kind of pressure to the middleman also that inventory is not selling so companies are paying a lot of attention to the inventory management also and for that middlemen are also coming up with the technology to make the inventory management so nowadays what marketers are doing they are using technology to make a good balance between the inventory now uh, we see this big store uh, around us like amazon ka store reliance big basket now nowadays what they have started especially in outside indian country they have just added some kind of rfid or any technological tool and whenever the product uh, get that reorder quantity reaches to that reorder point the order is automatically placed to the uh, manufacturer because at that time middleman or this wholesaler or retailer need not to see uh, how many products i am left at what is the right or optimum level of inventory ordering so these things are has been distributed or given to the technology itself they the, uh, on the basis of algorithm whatever they are given and they are ordering the product as and when required similarly there are also smart shelves they move the product if the customer goes to the market and he or she just picks up the product whatever is coming uh, to the arms length now they that person in, uh, picks up that product the smart shelves are just moving the products to the um, higher uh, to the front rows so basically it's all about how they are managing the inventory so that note the note any uh, old product is left behind now the next decision which a company needs to take is the transportation the choice of transportation carries affect the pricing of products delivery performance and the condition of goods when they arrive all of which will affect the customer satisfaction see what would be your satisfaction level if you order a fridge and you get it dented or its paint is removed from different places or it's chipped you, you probably you will not like it so what you will do you will immediately resend it to the wholesaler or the middleman or dealer that we don't want this thing so definitely in that scenario especially in the case of durables where the uh, task of the company or dealer is to give the good to the customer door in that scenario transportation plays more important role but otherwise when we are talking about distribution to transport safely all the goods to the door steps of dealers manufacturer retailers or the customer is of prime importance for shipping goods to its house uh, warehouses dealers and customer to the company can choose among basically five main transportation mode like truck rail water pipeline and air along with an alternative mode for digital products the internet i am also reaching you through the internet only so this is the also kind of uh, transmission or transportation policy of the uh, cec that they have chosen internet as a media to distribute their content using internet now the last is uh, logistics today more and more companies are adopting the concept of integrated logistic management this concept emphasizes teamwork both inside the company and among all the marketing channel organization it helps in maximizing the performance of entire distribution system see uh, you must have uh, visited different garment uh, stores like if you, uh, if you name any 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 branded like peter singland or any any brand of clothing you visit and suppose you like any shirt or any trouser or any any product so uh, let's say it's not available there of your size that product is not available in your size then what you will do he will say sir give me 2 hours or 3 hours i'll immediately get that size you just try the product and if you are liking it and you order it i'll you will get it immediately within the time of 2 2 hours and 3 hours depending upon the size of the city now how they are doing that the thing is that basically they have set a mechanism to e help each other in a way that they also share the logistics within that brand so they have developed that kind of understanding with each other and especially in digital era when we are talking about omni channel now what is omni channel that you are watching any ad in the tv or you are listening any ad in the radio you are ordering it through your ipad or mobile or desktop you are seeing that product in any offline store and you are getting it delivered at your home so this is all the smooth transition between all different channels which a company is 
taking care of to serve their customer so smooth transition from one channel to another and just to integrate all the information what a single customer has passed on at different channels they are integrated that information and they are using it th uh, that information in completing one transaction now this is to uh, was related with the external distribution similarly when we are talking about a big company there are so many things which have to be incorporated or integrated within the organization companies are paying a lot of attention how to integrate the internal system the product the sales department should uh, should be able to communicate with the production team to tell what is the time lag between the production and sales they are also able to tell the marketing team what they want what kind of advertisement they want they are also should have connection with the r and d department just to tell that what companies what customers are telling about the products what complaints the companies are customers are having about the product so that they can communicate first hand information to the r and d department so basically there should be smooth transition of idea and resources within the company also so that makes a win win approach for customer and company for giving a successful nice and useful product to the customer so inside the company various department work together and logistic performance uh, they also maximize the logistic performance outside the company the company must integrate its logistics system with those of a supplier and customer to maximize the performance of the entire distribution network so basically it's a complete value chain system which a company needs to follow not only within the organization but also outside the organization now we are coming towards the last p of the marketing mix which is called fourth p so basically promotion mix is a blend of various communication tools that a company uses to pursue communication and engagement with its current and potential customer and it also helps them in building the relationships with customer especially when we are moving in 21st century the term engagement has its own importance we know that those days also when advertisement come and we all watch that advertisement whatever we have to say that advertisement we need to discuss it. we only used to discuss it with the uh, with our friends or families or our known groups we never had a chance to discuss our problems our issues our likings or disliking directly to the company but with this digital media or with this um, open communication policy of company with customer or with this engagement element now customers can directly talk to their companies and they can tell what they like or what they don't like so basically it helps in building the relationship so now it is every p has become important it's not one way communication now it's a two way communication now so a company promotion mix is also called marketing communication mix so it comprises of various tools and techniques like some something you must have heard about advertisement public relation personal selling sales promotion direct and digital marketing so these all are different tools which a company used to promote its products so if we define advertising so advertising is a paid form of non personal presentation and promotion of ideas goods or services by an identified sponsor there are several plus and minuses points of advertising the catch here is that the first thing is that it is a paid form and second thing is that the sponsor is identified every channel knows that who has paid for that particular advertisement to run it's not that that somebody ask us somebody give us money and we have just run the advertisement it's not a form of advertisement when we are talking about advertisement we are saying the sponsor is identified and it is a form it's never free and uh, advertising has certain advantage advantage as we know that it can quickly and simultaneously reach masses see if we run an advertisement in a television and recently cricket match during cricket match if one advertisement is there everyone is uh, at everyone's uh, place it's running so the reach was huge of the advertisement it's not that okay uh, it's just 5 million or 2 million people are watching it's millions and millions of people are watching that advertisement at the same time and geographical dispersed person ladakh a person sitting in ladakh is also watching that advertisement at the same time while the other person sitting in kerala is also watching that advertisement at the same time so there is no time lag between the watching of advertisement too 
and bars are also dispersed and if we talk it if we convert it in per user percentage it's very low definitely advertisement is very expensive thing especially on television but when we convert the viewership uh, and we divide it with the viewership it comes very low so and message is also same it's not that somebody is saying something there ladakh mein and the other thing is saying at kerala so message is same it's structured message and it's given at the same time for the same duration and it it is a one way the but the problem with communication uh, in advertisement is it's a one way communication in advertisement you cannot stop the marketer in between that hey we don't like this thing you can write about it later on but in between you cannot stop that advertisement that don't show this stuff in the advertisement now this is very challenging for the companies to engage the audience through advertisement because it is a one way communication what if if i have spent crores of rupees in first making that advertisement and then ma- making it available on the television and you are just switching or flipping your channels when my advertisement is run so basically here advertisers have uh, roles come into the picture where they try to make that kind of advertisement which will interest the customer maybe they can take it uh, from their daily life problem or they can add emotional angle to that or maybe some rational kind of thing or maybe they can bring some celebrity in between so there would be different challenges for the marketers or per se advertisement companies to make the customer connected with that advertisement now person selling is another form of advertisement where the advertisement is done on the one to one basis and it helps in building the relationship we go to the market and we uh, we just ask the company and you have seen that picture also when i show it on the distribution slide that a person is attending the customer so basically we company gives or the vendor gives a specialized person to the customer to take care of their needs and it's not binding on the customer that then when we are getting the individual attention they necessarily have to buy they can simply say thank you and they can get back so basically they the person selling person should be very very patient with the customers also otherwise they are going to lose the customer if they can show their some arrogance now the third kind of uh, strategy for promoting the things is the sales promotion now sales promotion can precisely be defined like uh, assortments like coupons contest discount freemiums premiums etc now i have word the premium and i uh, use the word freemium now what is freemium that is a new term freemium is that like netflix is doing youtube is doing that they are introducing some product initially free and then at a premium price like youtube has uh, offered its uh, new kind of service where no advertisement is there in its videos and you can download the videos from one button only so basically they are giving some added services at free at initially and after some premium prices later on so they are coming up with different kind of schemes just to make their product more usable and having more utility added to it now a uh, different kind of promotion can add, add the excitement like you you all are aware monsoon discount christmas discount new year discount so we all wait about this discount period so basically it uh, like today only amazon has come up with its uh, summer bonanza sale or re- monsoon sale two day flash sale they have come so they create some kind of excitement in the customers now public relation basically sometimes companies are not directly doing anything but they are uh, supporting some cause just to create the public relation they ima- make their image like marathon they'll do, do for breast cancer they will stand for polio they will uh, stand against swachh bharat so they can take any cause any social uh, social society related cause or social cause to stand up with the society and to show that we are here to improve our country and through which they are making the public relation pr can also reach many prospects who avoid salesmen and advertisement as the message is get by those people as news and events rather than as a sales directed communication so maybe it's a kind of strategy where though they are not explicitly giving uh, telling something about them but they are uh, creating a buzz about them by uh, supporting any cause so that people will also talk about them like reliance foundation is one of that kind of endeavor and when we are talking about uh, we are living in social media so this kind of uh, strategy is going to have more benefit 
Now last is digital or direct marketing. Basically the internet and mobile data has facilitated this kind of marketing. Now you can directly TV, home shop 18, there are various channels which sell the products directly to the customers. You need not to go to any shop or any market or to do not visit any kind of place, but you can order uh, the product as per your requirement, as per your convenience and digitally also you can see, feel and uh, have a look about the product and you can also read the reviews of the product. So basically directly through digitally they are connected with the customers and they can also get the immediate response in forms of uh, reviews which customer give whenever they are using the products and it helps in building the relationship because whenever we buy gen uh, any product online generally we go to the reviews. So that is why it can work as a uh, two way communication between the companies and customers. So the example of this tool is mobile marketing, email, telephone calls, social media etc. So basically we can alter our message. For example, Amazon can give different email to me and different email to you as an offer uh, depending upon our past buying history. So basically they can add individualism to this kind of promotion tool which is uh, slight difficult in other forms of promotion. So lastly, I want to conclude my presentation by saying that marketing mix cannot be obsolete because this is the foundation pillars of any marketing program. We still have products, we still have prices, we still have to set prices and we still promote products, we still tell people that yes, we are also here, try us and we also need to distribute the products. So basically, these are the four core function, though uh, people also say that with services, we have additional three uh, like physical um, uh, distribution, this physical evidence, people and packaging, but these P can be added, this P can be reduced, but these 4P about which we have learned today are going to be remain uh, with the marketing. So if, we, if I conclude this um, lecture by saying that an effective marketing program blends the marketing mix element into an integrated marketing program designed to achieve the company's marketing objective by engaging customers and delivering values to them. The marketing mix constitutes the company's tactical toolkit for establishing strong positioning in the target marketing. Thank you so much.